Hey everyone, welcome back to Andy Demos, and today I'm excited to show you the new batch of diamond pedals. Now, if you haven't heard already, Solid Gold Effects, another great Canadian company, has taken over for that brand, and they've done them uh, a great justice because already we have four great pedals that stack nicely, and there's more on the way. But let's check out what all of these pedals can do individually, and then I'll do some more stacking like you heard in the intro towards the end of this demo. Introducing the next generation of diamond pedals, the Comp EQ, Drive, Tremolo, and Memory Lane. All of these new compact pedals have classic diamond DNA in their solder joints, not to mention soft touch true bypass switching, high quality components, and the analog circuits can accept up to 18 volts for increased headroom. The Drive is a natural sounding wide range overdrive based around a premium Burr Brown op amp. Just like the J-Drive, a warm switch engages a shelf at 1 kHz to tame a bright amp or just put the finishing touch on your tone. The active bass and treble are back Sandal-based filters located post-game. A powerful set of controls that can boost or cut, and their interactivity results in changes to the mid-range content as well. One thing I always remembered about the J-Drive was that you could get a fairly flat response, not your typical mid-boosted, uh, you know, sort of 80s overdrive, but this one with the bass and treble, you can cut or boost and get everything from scooped to uh, that mid-boost sound. So let's start fairly flat, and then I'm just going to engage the warm switch, which is going to really sweeten up these single coils. <laughs> Let's add a bit more treble since we're on the bridge humbucker now. Take the warm switch off. So that's just scratching the surface, but already you can tell just that warm switch has a great way of just uh, focusing the pedal to the type of pickups you want to put into it. Let's try some higher gain settings and really sculpt the sound with those active bass and treble, which is actually post gain. <laughs> So here's where we're getting some mid boost here. Thank you. 
With the same gain and output, let's get a scoop sound just by increasing the bass and treble. And here we might want to engage that warm switch. I could tell from uh, the recording waveform right here that it's just jumping up when we increase that bass, but it isn't really flubbing out the amplifier. Uh, there's a lot of headroom, and uh, you know you could actually run this thing at 18 volts. Let's try the highest gain setting here and really fine tune it to this bridge humbucker. The Comp EQ takes Diamond's coveted yellow box to new heights, while still preserving all the chewiness of the original optical compression circuit. For starters, the original quick attack can be achieved with the flick of a switch, while the status LED tells you how aggressive the comp is setting in. A new slower attack option has been added for more transparent experiences with a subtle studio style compression. Diamond has added their famous Tilt EQ to the compressor, which is a one-stop shop for bass cut or boost and treble cut and boost, while an active mid control centered at 800 Hz can enhance any amp you plug into by boosting or cutting by 10 decibels. Let's start with that classic attack, which is faster in the down position, and I'm going to keep the EQ and mid-range fairly flat right here and just try some different compression settings just to give you a feel of how this optical compressor can really sweeten up your sound. <laughs> With this higher compression setting, let's just switch over to the slower attack, which is actually going to let you hear more of the natural uh, snap of your dry signal, and then the compressor kind of kicks in slowly. <laughs>
So unlike a lot of classic compressors, the optical circuit really just gives you more of your guitar. It doesn't just kind of squish the whole signal. Now let's uh, really tweak the uh, tone of that signal with the mids and the tilt EQ. <laughs> The scoop setting can really embellish uh, any amplifier, even if you're playing through an already kind of scooped uh, black panel fender like I am today. And of course you could back off on the compressor and just use this pedal mainly as a, a tone sculptor with the mids and tilt EQ. But I find having just a little bit of that compression on the slower attack just kind of helps fine tune the whole sound. It kind of acts more like a, a studio compressor, just a, more of a silent weapon in the background. So we'll see how this sounds with a overdriven sound. I'll start without the comp and then kick it in so you could hear the EQ and that slight balancing of the strings with a low compression setting. The Diamond Memory Lane needs no introduction, as it was one of the first boutique delays to push the possibilities of Bucket Brigade circuits in terms of fidelity and features. With Diamond's new DBBD, that's right, Digital Bucket Brigade technology, the Compact Memory Lane still uses analog compounding and anti-alias filtering with RAM storage instead of the old way of using capacitors. What this means is that the sought after warmth is still available, but with now twice the delay time and much lower noise. Dual foot switches offer tap tempo with subdivisions, classic memory lane modulation with depth control, and delay time doubling on the fly. Plus you get three different delay modes with various voicings and behavior, while advanced settings let you choose options like trails and momentary modulation. Let's start by checking out those three distinct voices in the memory lane, and this is indicated with the color of the LED on the left foot switch. So let's start with green, which is modern, and I'm going to disable the modulation on all these modes just for now. 
Although it says modern, we're still kind of voiced like a you know classic analog delay, just like the original memory lane. Let's switch over to the warm mode, which is gonna make those repeats even darker. <laughs> And here's vintage mode, which actually cuts down the maximum delay time, so we're really kind of entering more of a classic uh, analog Bucket Brigade sound here. <laughs> And to engage the modulation on either of these modes, you just hold down on the left switch and then now your mod knob is controlling the depth. <laughs> Let's get back to warm mode and engage the modulation, and I've set it up for a fast slapback, so we could get away with using a lot more modulation here. Let's really increase the feedback and get sort of a atmospheric cloud above the notes and it's not really going to easily go into self oscillation. And also I want to show you how you could hold the right tap tempo foot switch and easily double the time you've tapped in.
The Diamond Tremolo has long been a favorite of mine ever since I showed you what the original can do back in 2009. The compact version still uses an opto isolator to generate 60s amp style trim, while a second FET based chopper circuit provides kill switch style patterns or momentary bursts in the dicer mode. The center toggle cycles up through three tap divisions, while pressing down selects four different waveforms sine, shark, square, or FET chopper. Holding the tap switch on the right will double the rate at any point. While holding the left foot switch unleashes Insta-Chop and can be set up for momentary or latching operation. With a slower speed, let's just cycle through those four different waveforms with the toggle switch in the center. You can go from a classic sine wave all the way to something that resembles a kill switch. And that's just the beginning because you have all those different rhythmic combinations. And I'm just going to go back to a square wave for this setting because it really helps emphasize the different patterns we're getting here. And they're really easy to play along with and you could still use tap tempo. <laughs> Here's a cool rhythm that incorporates various waveforms. It's called one, two, three, chop. So if you start off with a sine wave, the fourth is actually gonna be a chopped waveform. So it's a really cool way to accent different notes in your uh, strumming or in different riffs.
here's a rhythm that I remember from the very first diamond tremolo, and it just sounds great when you stack all the effects and get this huge sound. It kind of just plays itself. Well, there you go, a new batch of diamond petals in a sleek new enclosure, and I just can't wait to see what they come out with next. Be sure to check out diamondpetals.com for more information, and I'll see you next time.